So good morning again. Uh, I am to speak on fruit crop research for export current status and opportunity. So uh, uh, I'm thankful that I got a uh, topic in uh, crops in which I have worked for a uh, pretty long time. So uh, to start with, I would just give a background that India is the second largest fruit producer of the uh, after China in the world. It has 10.5, 10.9% uh, share in a total food production of the world. Okay, and then uh, has about 30% share in tropical fruit production. Uh, tropical fruit production uh, uh, means mainly the, uh, the crops which I have listed down here, banana, pineapple, mango, avocado. Um, important crop, uh, Grape I have not listed there because it's not truly really tropical, but now it's tropical viticulture also is there. But export share is only 0.5% in a global fruit market. Uh, we say that the most traded fruits in the world are banana, I mean tropical fruits are banana, pineapple, mango and avocado. Out of which it is important to note that we are the top producers of banana and mango. However, in both these crops, we are uh, not really contributing very high uh, in exports as far as uh, the world scenario is concerned. Next. This is to show that the food production in India uh, over the last, uh, say, 20 years, it is just progressing. And uh, that is how we have a good opportunity in a fruit export. Uh, production share in different uh, fruits in India, if you uh, say, that uh, we have major uh, production uh, share in banana, mango, citrus and other things, but uh, rest of other fruits have got uh, very less percentage, but the one which we produce in less percentage are um, uh, topping in the list of export. Say, if you uh, look at the share of different fruits exported from India, it's the uh, grapes, uh, mango, and uh, a new thing is like even guava is coming up, I mean, among the least. Uh, progress line uh, is very continuous, except that this COVID years uh, we have dropped into export because of the obvious uh, issues of transport. Now uh, I start with little bit uh, information on the grape. Uh, these are the top 10 countries in the world where grapes, from where the grapes are exported. You can see the India is missing there. We are not uh, one of the top 10 countries of export of grapes from India. But India exports grapes uh, a large quantity. In fact, uh, almost half of the uh, uh, fruits exported to Europe, uh, I mean, fruits exported from India to Europe, uh, grape is the share is 50 percent. So you look at the different top 10 countries where uh, we are exporting grapes from India. These are Netherlands, Russia, UK. First is Netherlands, I mean European countries and then uh, some Gulf countries like uh, uh, United Arab, Saudi Arabia and then the near, nearby countries like Bangladesh. Now <coughs> I just want to give a story form. Um, so the grape export started during early 90s uh, as a major crop. See, this was a big story. Uh, many people must have contributed in beginning of uh, exports of grapes from India. But very interesting part, uh, uh, I know that because 90s, our National Research Center for Grapes was started. So from there onwards, I know some stories which I would like to share with you. There was one uh, uh, grape grower named Mr. Jaktap. He was an illiterate fellow. He was putting all the papers thumb impression. One of his uh, uh, known person was in England. 
and uh, he just happened to tell him that there are no grapes in uh, Europe during April May. He got the idea and during that year he co purchased, collected some good grapes, packed them in a box, nice boxes, prepared a pallet and along with the grapes he himself went to India. And uh, I have talked with the person. So he said that the first day when he reached there, he tried to distribute small, small grape bunches in a plastic pouches to people on the roadside on uh, England, uh, rather uh, proper London. And then from the next day onwards, he started selling them because the people who ate uh, previous day liked the grapes and there were no grapes in the entire Europe market. And within a couple of days, he sold all his grapes, what he could uh, carry along with him, few, uh, few pallets in uh, uh, his uh, plane. He came back. When he came back, he was a satisfied person. He did not spend uh, or earn anything from his pocket. Whatever he had spent, he got it back. But he was with a lot of ambition. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sharad Pawarji, Honorable Sharad Pawarji was the Chief Minister of Maharashtra. He went to him telling that I did this and he was very highly impressed and then the uh, history started. The, uh, Sharad Pawarji himself along with some group went to uh, Europe and uh, found out what is the situation and very next year he sanctioned 18 pack houses in Maharashtra, each costing that time 3 crore rupees and uh, with a stroke of one uh, signature of this uh, then chief minister of Maharashtra, the entire uh, uh, situation changed because the Maharashtra all of a, time, all of a sudden became the uh, export market hub uh, because of that and that's why I said here ki there were no grapes during April May in Europe and Europe wanted grapes throughout the year and taking that advantage we started our export but the export is not that simple so a lot of regulations a lot of uh, 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 preparatory work is required before you can export uh, formally uh, to Europe country like Europe I mean countries in the Europe so, uh, so, what are the important uh, landmarks, research landmarks uh, was there. I, I have mentioned in my uh, abstract that uh, it is uh, the Maharashtra Draksha Bagayadar Sangha and National Research Center for Grapes who helped the uh, increase of export directly, indirectly. One of the thing which I have said, introduction of Dogridge rootstocks. Grapes were grown on uh, own root system. Salinity was a big issue and uh, grapes were not uh, um, uh, growing well after a certain period of time due to accumulation of uh, saline, salinity in the root zone. What can be done? Mr. Arve, one grower, went to Indian Institute of Horticulture and said that there is a problem, sir. We cannot grow grapes, our sizes are not coming up and so on, uh, the leaves are scorching, they are falling off. What can be done? There was no ready solution available. It was Dr. BMC Reddy who was completing his PhD thesis under the guidance of Dr. Chadda Saab. And uh, his thesis was being checked by Dr. Shikhamani who was our uh, then director. Uh, first director of NRC Grapes. He's, he narrated this story to me. When Dr. Uh, the grower came to IIHR, he just striked that in that thesis, uh, experiment was on the rootstock of grapes where they were almost uh, um, uh, concluding that there is no much uh, need for rootstocks in grapes because the experiments were conducted in Bangalore where there is no salinity. But Dogri's rootstock, one of the entry in the, uh, that particular uh, uh, grapes thing, showed that 
it is excluding some of the uh, uh, salinity components of the soil while uh, abs absorbing nutrients and it is increasing the absorption of potassium which he got uh, interested dr uh, shikamani and then he said why don't you try this the experiment was abandoned so the dogris rootstock was wild growing in that experimental plot people went there collected some cuttings sold for the uh, uh, one billing of 24 rupees again the new history started a uh, year later mr uh, that particular grower reported back to uh, scientist of ihr and said that please come and see what's uh, what's miracle has happened so a team of scientists again went to uh, tasgao and found out that this root stocks are making wonder and the history started now the entire grapes are uh, grape industry is growing their grapes on dogris root stock and without dogris root stocks neither our grape will grow in that saline soil nor uh, the size required for export will be there so it is a very landmark area where uh, um, that research was useful second standardization of uh, schedule of growth regulators thomson seedless was the ruling variety thomson seedless cannot increase its size and other quality parameters unless until it is uh, growth regulators are used so growth regulators are used everywhere we require a loose bunch for export at a early stage of bunch development unless until you uh, give up uh, ga the stem elongation will not take play, play, uh, take place your bunch will not be big and loose at pre flowering stage again if you do not give ga ga is a pollinicide it reduces the uh, pollen active pollens so reduces the Uh, pollination and it is the number of uh, berries in the bunch to make the bunch loose then uh, cytokinins uh, cytokinins are cell multiplying uh, units they, they increase the size of the grape so 16 mm more than 16 mm berry loose bunch was the character was achieved only due to uh, um, uh, growth regulators so that was uh, important research then introduction of varieties came in apart from thomson seedless is a white variety the uh, industry required colored grapes as well so flame seedless crimson seedless red globe all these varieties came of course many of the growers brought this almost uh, through their baggages the cuttings from various countries to india in the early period of the time I, i i know one farmer who brought four sticks of from flame seedless in his bag and then uh, out of which only one survived rooted and from that one flame seedless the entire flame uh, seedless uh, developed in uh, grape industry in nasi of course a uh, few years later when nrc grapes came we officially introduced all these varieties flame seedless 2a clone is a clone of thomson seedless which has got a bold berries crimson seedless and red globe is a seeded variety which has got a sh shelf life now red globe is exported mainly to uh, china because they require bolder berries many of these varieties required a different kind of a growth regulator schedule thomson seedless required a lot of ga if you give ga to crimson seedless that will turn into short berries every bunch will get completely spoiled so the again with the introduction of new varieties standardization of a growth regulator was equally important third came electrostatic spraying system why i am mentioning that here with lot of sprays for grapes the grape is criticized that you have so many number of sprays pesticides things and like that but during days those days scientists i mean uh, growers used to do dipping of bunches and their dipping is a very expensive uh, proposition after the introduction of electrostatic spraying 
because there is a good coverage many of the dipping vanished and the cost of production came down substantially then establishment of a referral lab referral lab for residue management the grapes from india were banned in 2002 by uh, to the uh, in the europe uh, saying that it contained poison methomil was the culprit and the uh, things were uh, in uh, trouble again european union said unless until you have your own uh, pesticide monitoring system grapes from india will not come back to europe we got the advantage i was the young scientist we went to uh, 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 europe for training on uh, the residue man management and other things we came back and the national referral lab for residue management established in national research center for grapes so uh, now it is one of the best laboratory in the asia as far as the analytical uh, machinery and other uh, things are uh, concerned referral laboratory taught grape growers how to spray when to spray what to spray how grapes can be grown without uh, residue in the harvesting time so that is uh, another landmark region then bio intensive disease management so as a pathologist when i joined the first target given was uh, that uh, people are doing excessive sprays when they are not required they are not using uh, any biological control agent and other things so we introduced lot of such treatments and made the entire spray schedule bio intensive with the help of which we can we could reduce our pesticide uses location specific management advisory uh, disease management advisory based on weather information the network of 100 weather stations were spread across the uh, maharashtra grape areas we collected the weather information disease forecasting and many other uh, um, uh, technologies merged and we started real time location specific uh, disease management advisory to the individual grower which uh, talked about what is the best possible thing he can do on his farm not the region not the area so uh, with that again an amount of sprays reduced and uh, this uh, export could become more uh, then uh, last one i have mentioned plastic cover for protection of rain and uh, uh, hail storm many of the uh, occasions i have seen that the grape growers today informs that i have sold my um, uh, vineyard and i have got this much of money next day morning he says that there was a hail storm yesterday night and everything got destroyed yesterday i was mention mentioning that say india is the only country where grapes are grown without protection so uh, plastic cover i also got an opportunity to go to spain and italy and even to israel to see how the plastic covers are uh, installed so those plastic covers now is a uh, one of the industry this is how the plastic uh, covers are uh, grown particularly the grapes are exported to china uh, in the month of january february and the different kind of bold berries are required in chinese market the those uh, grow, grape growing many situations is just not possible without this plastic so uh, this this is a jugad uh, uh, technology there is nothing in that the people have collected various kind of plastics nets even sarees and many such things and uh, install them over their uh, plants during uh, say september october onwards and then they have achieved this slowly slowly the things are getting shape yesterday we were uh, trying to discuss with cravo group here that they have designed now a formal system uh, how the plastic can be uh, raised but that is a uh, very important for export of grapes in china this is uh, uh, importance uh, of everything because now current situation the grape has two important things to uh, talk to 
see the bold berries, loose bunch. This is how that bold and loose bunch will be. But untimely rain in December, January onwards, even there are rains in March in grape growing area. When the rain comes at after horizon, the berries simply crack and they are destroyed. Their shelf life becomes very uh, less and then export becomes very difficult. But there are some varieties all over the world which are rain tolerant. And these are these two varieties. Ara 39, uh, 79 is a red variety and Ara 15 is a green variety. They, these were introduced now in India. Last year, at this particular stage of growth, there were heavy rains. The entire vineyards were flooded for uh, at least the period of two to three days. In this uh, particular uh, orchards, not a single berry was cracked and they could export. So rain tolerance is there in that these are patented varieties and uh, Sanyadri group has uh, brought them in, in India. Uh, so this is new thing. Even now NRC Grapes is also doing research on breeding where their foremost and important character is rain tolerance or uh, resistance to cracking under high humid conditions. This I was telling, I mean, uh, this is a chart showing the export grapes av uh, available from Chile. I said in the beginning that April, May was uh, the period where grapes were not available. That's why we could export our grapes to Europe. But it is not so. Now, most of the places, grapes are available almost throughout the year. Even Indian grapes, barring some uh, small span after, uh, say, uh, July to September, grapes are not there. Otherwise, India also every, but further, the grapes are stored in cold storage. And uh, storability in a cold storage itself is a uh, property. And then uh, we can uh, see uh, one of the uh, agri fair I went to uh, Italy few years back. And there was a counter for grapes where they had shown the uh, uh, various kind of boxes over there. So this was har harvested from such and such country uh, 12 months before. This is, I mean, if you are, you can store the grapes for 12 months in cold storage, this t time of availability has gone. Now it is only the quality which uh, uh, rules. So uh, everywhere it is so. And India also is competing uh, not only for April, May market, they are marketing uh, purely based on quality. I saw one uh, uh, label. Nutritional facts, people are conscious and uh, I mean, this is on one of the Chilean basket, such kind of label where uh, put where they, are, uh, they put some information on nutrient requirement, nutritional fact of grapes and other things. This also can increase the uh, export. Now I am talking about second important crop to us now which I am working is uh, mango, uh, fresh mangoes. Again, uh, various countries. Here, I would like to show you only two things. World market is, uh, uh, is Tommy Atkin is uh, variety. There are other varieties. But none of these varieties are really uh, preferred by many. Most of this variety has got a turpentine flavor when they are slightly. So Indians won't like. So most of the export market, Wherever the people are of Indian origin, Indian grape, Indian mangoes are preferred. So, uh, population of Indian origin, which I am, uh, just wanted to show. So many lakhs of uh, Indian population is across the uh, uh, world. And uh, wherever they are there, mango uh, export can be done. Uh, Alfonso is the number one variety which is exported from uh, India, even though Begampalli, Keshar, and Dasheri and other varieties are being exported, but nothing competes with Alfonso. And Alfonso has only uh, two problems. There is alternate bearing, so availability of fruits, 
and uh, spongy tissue where uh, the sp uh, only technology which we have developed for the control of uh, spongy tissue is harvest when barana uh, maturity is there. 75% I mean, like fruit maturity is there. You harvest, there are some parameters which experts can understand. And uh, if you harvest at that time, neither the fruit fly nor the spongy tissue will be a serious problem. Then like many other fruits, people have introduced bagging. So when you do bagging at early fruit growth stage, uh, mango uh, luster appearance and the infection of uh, uh, fruit fly and the spongy tissue will not be there. Uh, Pre-cooling is done at 12, deg 12 to 13 degrees centigrade temperature. Hot water treatment has been introduced uh, for the control of diseases and uh, fruit fly. Uh, different countries, size of the fruit, different temperature and timings. These are uh, uh, vapor heat treatment units uh, already, APEDA has established in number of places. Uh, Different countries have got a different uh, standards of uh, treatment. These are mainly for the uh, stone weevil and uh, fruit flies. So uh, pomegranate, I have very little to say about pomegranate, but pomegranate is an another important crop where uh, India is the top in uh, global production, uh, various parts. So it's, a, it's the fruit where available in India almost throughout the year. Production is increasing, productivity is increasing, uh, export is increasing. So all are in, uh, in increasing over last few years, but still we have constraint. Our productivity is much less than many good countries. We need to work on productivity. The uh, export is quite a good, but uh, as on today, if you ask uh, what is happening to pomegranate, people will say that why to export? In India itself, I get 140 rupees a kg in most of the fr uh, fruits available in India. If I export, I don't get more than 100 rupees a kg. So it's a uh, local market price is ruling as far as the pomegranate export is concerned. Pomegranate, uh, single variety. Bhagwa is ruling and it's, uh, we don't know whether it is an advantage or disadvantage. At one time it can be a, a disadvantage. These are the varieties which are grown across the world. So we have different varieties. Uh, I don't know the merits or demerits, but only thing that uh, we have three varieties, Mrudula, uh, Solapur Lal and the ruling Bhagwa. The only bhagwa can grow more, more than 30 grams, I mean 300 grams, which is the export requirement. Murdula doesn't grow to that level. And uh, same thing is with uh, Solapur Lal, which is introduced recently by NRC, palm granite. So we may require some good varieties, internationally traded varieties in India. Somebody has uh, said, uh, I think, uh, uh, the secretary, um, and from his presentation I have to taken, recent times, the export of uh, 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 Amrut, uh, Guava has got increased. We have introduced uh, avocado because avocado has uh, increasing its demand in European market. Fruit market, fruit export only in Europe is important because uh, it's uh, European market which gives you stability and the profit. So uh, European market, avocado, Haas and Maluma varieties are uh, very, very important. This Maluma variety is patented. We have introduced along with different rootstocks. The work is in progress in Dapoli. Some of the fruits which I have got, uh, this is again very good export, uh, this thing. Everywhere we can grow uh, dragon fruit these days. I was, uh, it was hard for me to believe that even in the high rainfall region, uh, dragon fruit it can be grown, but it is more productive than dry, drier areas in uh, high rainfall area of Konkan. But there are so many varieties we don't know yet. There are different types based on color of the flesh and skin and taste and other things. 
uh, we don't know much about these varieties in India. So, a lot of scope is there. This is the last one which I have, uh, yesterday I was talking about Rambutan, Indonesian fruit. It is growing uh, excellent in Maharashtra, particularly Konkan region. See, uh, lychee cannot be grown in South India because the short day plant doesn't flower so easily in uh, South. But in the entire South, Rambutan flowers very profusely. We have got two years uh, orchards in Konkan showing excellent flowering and excellent fruiting. So that's the future of uh, export of fruits in India. Uh, we, we believe that uh, if the proper efforts are made, uh, people can export good quality fruits across the world. Thank you for the presence here and sorry sir, uh, thank for you, taking sir, little more thank time. Thank you very much, sir, for an excellent presentation. Uh, three things we learned from uh, his presentation. One important thing is that even a layman who is not educated with his innovative invention, he could bring the uh, export to business. Secondly, the growth regulators and the dragon, I mean, uh, the uh, uh, root stocks. So these things led to the export. So it was an excellent presentation. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.